Good day, Internet. It's Kale from Empodical here to talk to you about data quality and particularly uh, Empodical's brand new smart type tool. Uh, I'll be introducing Sam, a senior director of engineering at Empodical in charge of the smart type project. Uh, but first of all, for those of us who are completely new to Empodical, I want to start with a really quick primer on just what it is that we do. So we're a customer data platform. We've been around since 2013 and we work with all kinds of brands. And you'll see here quick service restaurants, media companies, banks, uh, e-commerce retailers of all kinds, any brand that needs to maintain a relationship with their customer, especially a relationship across multiple platforms. So as a customer data platform, our task is to get data from wherever it is. And that could be mobile apps, um, your web properties, third party sources, point of sale systems in your brick and mortar stores. And we use identity resolution to bring all that data from those different platforms together into a single view of each of your customers. And we make that view available to any services that need it. So that can be marketing automation, uh, DSPs and DMPs and walled gardens for advertising, analytic services, AB testing services. Uh, and also we make it uh, directly available via our profile API to power personalized experiences any way you can make an API call. So there are four key pillars to what we do. Uh, the first is data infrastructure. And this is our real-time data pipeline. It's our suite of SDKs, our collection of integrations with all of our downstream tools, uh, all of which are available to switch on at any time without a lot of setup. The second pillar is data quality. Uh, now this is what we're gonna focus on today. Uh, this is about making sure that you're collecting the right data and doing it consistently. And this is super important and, and difficult when you're bringing together data from all these different sources, you really need to be able to control quality. And that's what Sam's gonna be talking to us about. Uh, third is data governance. Uh, and that's all about controlling and protecting your data, uh, making sure that you are meeting your obligations under legislation like the GDPR, and you're collecting consent from your users for what you're using their data for. And finally, data-driven personalization. And this is all about using the data that you've collected for delivering uh, those one-to-one -one personalized experiences in your messaging, in your apps, and wherever you have a relationship with the customer. So now let's focus on the problem of data quality. And I want to introduce you to Sam Doza, the Senior Director of Engineering at Empodical. He's our smart type lead. Uh, and as uh, Sam gets going, I also just want to invite you to um, to write any questions you have in the comments under this video, and we'll have a section uh, afterwards where we'll take uh, any questions. Sam, how are you doing? Thanks, Kael, doing uh, very well. Yes. Uh, so yeah, uh, hello everybody, thanks for joining. Uh, so yeah, excited to, to chat about smart type today. Um, you know, what, I, what I'm gonna do is is walk through uh, that, that single API approach um, that, that Kale mentioned that, you know, MParticle, has been working on for for quite some time now, um, and then talk about uh, how we've introduced this notion of uh, planning for your data uh, as a first party feature, and then I'll talk about uh, you know how Smart Type actually helps you implement that plan for an improved workflow and and better data quality. Fantastic. Okay, let's go. Cool. Um, so. Uh, you know this this notion of a single API. Uh, many customers, uh, many you know engineering teams, product teams, uh, they have a very common problem that's been around for for years now. Um, you know, and we've been helping many brands with for years now as well. Um, you know, the uh, all these brands, all these engineering teams, they have all sorts of uh, data that they'd like to collect to improve their user experience. Uh, to track their marketing campaigns. Um, and they want to do that without introducing additional overhead into their development processes, into their actual apps, right? So binary size and battery usage and network usage. Um, and they want to be able to uh, make all these changes in an agile way, right? Without, um, without making code changes. Um, and so today I'm going to walk through, um, you know, a, sort of a, a fictional... Uh, Freddy's Coffee, uh, which is a coffee shop. Uh, they accept mobile orders, you know, say, and, uh, you know, via Square, maybe a, a point of sale system, uh, maybe via a mobile app or a web app. Um, and they'd like to send data around these orders or these, you know, 
um, to data warehouses, uh, to an analytics vendor, uh, you know, maybe to a marketing or email engagement tool. Um, so now I'll just share my screen. So what might this actually look like? Um, you know, it, an event uh, that we're looking at here, uh, you know, in sort of JSON form, uh, you know, we're calling it choose item and it's got a few properties indicating, you know, what sort of coffee order uh, the customer is interested in. Um, you know, and uh, with um, many different APIs, uh, this JSON might look different, right? Um, so if you're sending it to this vendor, uh, it could have, you know, an array instead of keys and values. Um, you know, there could be just different, all sorts of different key names, uh, different enums, different types. Um, and so what mparticle has been doing uh, for years and really, uh, you know, um, has succeeded at is uh, making this easy to do across many platforms. And we have um, something like 20 SDKs um, across, you know, OTT, mobile, and certainly web, um, you know, to make this to make this really easy um, and to federate your data. Um, you know, so what what does this actually look like in you know, this JSON actually look like in uh, code, right? Um, so uh, I guess, you know, before mParticle, right, you have this notion of, you know, Friday's poor uh, developers need to, uh, you know, implement an analytics SDK, a data warehouse, uh, marketing automation, and they pass in, you know, maybe track event to one, insert event to another, and collect event to, to yet another. Um, you know, and this can be very error prone. You need to implement it three times. You have three binaries on the client side or even on the server side. Um, you know, and uh, with mParticle, you have a single API. Um, and so here we are in this example, implementing that choose item event. Uh, you know, and it has a few attributes, right? Um, so milk and item and count. Um, and then we pass that to mParticle, right? And so rather than having these three calls, we have one call. Um, so that's, that's all well and good, uh, you know, and, and, you know, it's a really, uh, great approach to abstraction. You can federate your data and filter your data and control for governance. Um, uh, but what Imparticle has, uh, introduced in the last year is this notion of planning, right? So, uh, how do you know that your, your event should be called choose item or, you know, is it choose space? Is it choose underscore? Um, what is it? And so we have this notion of a planning API or, or planning UI, and, and it's backed by a RESTful API. And so here we are in the mParticle, uh, you know, UI, um, and we're looking at my just demo workspace. Um, and uh, an mParticle workspace can have an arbitrary number of plans, as we call them, right? So these data plans. And so here we have an example, uh, Freddie's plan. And this plan is composed of all sorts of data points, right? Um, and so let's take a look at this choose item event that we keep talking about. Um, so we have here quantity, which uh, you know it, I've specified is a number and it's required. Milk, which is a Boolean, and that's also required, right? Indicating if the customer wants milk. Um, and item, which is a string, but it's, an, it's actually an enum, meaning it can only have a certain set of predefined values. Um, so, uh, you know, so let's see how we did with our mParticle implementation uh, by looking at the live stream. So if I look at the live stream, I see from just a moment ago, um, my event that was logged. Um, and this event, uh, I got the name right, but it looks like, uh, you know, it's mParticle is telling me that milk that none is is invalid that's meant to be a boolean not a string so true or false uh cappuccino looks like i spelled cappuccino wrong it's with uh two p's not one p um and then quantity is actually just entirely missing um and so um you know so once you have the plan it's really not enough just to plan we found it's it's really critical to actually give developers and engineering teams tools to uh, implement that plan. And that, that's, uh, that's where smart type comes in. So what is smart type? Smart type is a Java-based CLI. Uh, it's based on Kotlin multi-platform. Uh, 
that generates code based on any JSON schema. So we've been talking a lot about M particles specifically in data plans and our data planning API, but smart type is an open source tool that anybody can use uh, with JSON schema to generate models. Um, it's deployed publicly on Maven Central. You can use it programmatically, uh, you know, in uh, maybe a JVM based app that you've built, or you can use it in your CI system or, or however you'd like via the command line. And it surfaces two key commands um, in it, which sort of walks you through a wizard to uh, create a configuration, for example, filling in things like what type of platform uh, you'd like to generate, uh, where it should get your schemas from. Um, and then it also has generate, which is really the magic, right? And that's what actually um, takes your schema and converts it into a code. So now if we um, pop back to uh, Android Studio, I'm actually going to show this in action. So here you are in Android Studio. And the sort of the first thing I need to do is acquire my JSON schema, which in this case is going to be an nParticle plan. So down here at the command line, I'm going to use the mParticle CLI, uh, which you know implements the data planning RESTful API and lets me just fetch my plan on the fly. So as customers or, or as, as your product managers and different members of your team um, you know, change plans, update plans, you can run this. Um, you know, and have your developers run this uh, in, in the CI system to make sure they're always on the latest plan. So I'm going to hit Enter, and that's going to download the latest plan. Um, so now I have this locally, and we can see here it's in my, um, it's right in my uh, source code, and I would check that in. Um, the next step is to actually generate the models. So I'm going to run a smart type generate. And uh, what this is going to do is look at the JSON schema, um, convert it into Kotlin code. And I'll actually just share a quick slide on that. Um, it'll convert that JSON schema into Kotlin code. And then it'll use the sort of this awesome Kotlin multi-platform concept uh, to convert that Kotlin code oops, into uh, you know, various other target languages such as JavaScript, JVM, or native, right? So using it from Swift or uh, server-side Java, client-side Java, such as Android or Fire TV um, or JavaScript, so server-side Node or client-side Web. And so if we actually look what was generated, we actually see here um, my coffee order, right? Or, or specifically uh, the, the properties that I'd expect, right, represented in code. Um, and so now, uh, let's see how we actually transition from this the, the previous way of implementing a particle or any other analytics vendor um, with smart type. So with smart type, the first step is implementing uh, or sort of initializing smart type, right? And in this case, um, passing in a list of receivers, which are meant to uh, you know basically receive this JSON. Um, so I'm here, I'm passing a particle as a receiver, and I'm passing in my own custom receiver, perhaps such that I can post the JSON to my own server or to something like Firebase or, or any other tool. Um, you know, step two is to actually implement my data model. Um, and this is really the fun part, right? Um, so whereas above, um, I could type in, actually, maybe I'll even split screen this. Um, you know, so now with smart type, um, if we look at the side by side, before um, I'm manually typing in all these things, right? So choose item, maybe I, I screwed this up. Cappuccino, I obviously screwed up. Um, you know, and here um, I actually cannot make a mistake. Um, it, it's 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 or it's very challenging to. Um, so milk is an actual boolean. Um, you know, I couldn't pass a string there; it wouldn't compile. Quantity—that's a number. I, I couldn't pass. I couldn't exclude it actually because it's actually marked as a required uh, property of the constructor to this object. Um, likewise, uh, you know, my my item is surfaced as an enumeration that I can easily reference. Um, you know, and uh, in in that Freddy's plan that I showed earlier, and if you have you know JSON schema. 
um, other than the single event, you know, all of your events are surfaced in sort of an autocomplete way um, right in your editor, right? And so you can actually see your data model. Um, and so then the final step is just to send your, your completed event, uh, you know, or a smart type message as we call them uh, into the API. And then any receiver um, such as your own custom receiver would just receive a JSON object. Uh, likewise, mparticle receives that JSON object and, and ingests it. Um, and so uh, I guess one, one last item to call out is that, again, this is cross-platform, right? So I've been showing Android Studio for the purposes of demo, but um, you know, this is uh, easily usable in, in Swift and in uh, JS environments, right? And so here, um, the Swift code actually looks almost identical to the Kotlin code, right? I'm initializing smart type and I'm creating my object and I'm sending it in and I get that same uh, static type checking. Um, so I believe that that's all I had for today. Uh, so that's a, that's a super quick look at smart type. We're really excited about it. Um, we think it's a, a new paradigm for how our customers and sort of all engineering teams should, uh, you know, look to sort of plan for and collect their data. Um, and, uh, I please check it out on GitHub. Uh, let us know your feedback and, uh, yeah, look out for, for future changes as uh, the Kotlin multi-platform uh, sort of ecosystem evolves. That's it for me. Looks like we are just having a temporary connectivity issue. And so I think the next step here is to uh, look for some questions. So let me just, it seems like we lost Kale. So let me just pull up some questions. Oh, looks like Kale actually might have returned and we just need him to come back. There he is. G'day guys, how's things? Sorry, I had a, had a, a brief connectivity issue here, but I'm back. Uh, we have a few questions lined up uh, from Slack. Uh, one, Sam, is, uh, so isn't this tool uh, quite a lot like Swagger or OpenAPI? Can you... Yeah, uh, it's a good question. Um, so yeah, they are similar. Uh, they're both based on JSON schema, sort of. Uh, Swagger and OpenAPI is based on a sort of an older version of JSON schema and like a custom uh, version of it. And, and really the big difference is that um, Swagger and OpenAPI are really based on this, this Swagger uh, spec, right? So this notion of describing an HTTP API, they're not really uh, firstly concerned with defining a data model. It's similar, but, uh, but I think there are some critical differences. And what we looked at in um, the generated code that comes out of Swagger or OpenAPI is that it's really um, a little bit too heavyweight. Um, you know, in a particle, we, we really think about um, the, uh, you know, how heavy these SDKs are, you know, I. Uh, our job is to make an SDK that you don't even know is there and that is really lightweight. And if you look at the the code that's generated by Swagger and OpenAPI, it's very, very heavyweight with a lot of dependencies. Understood. Okay, that's great to know. Um, one more question here. So you mentioned that this is uh, you know an open source uh, platform. So if I'm not an MParticle customer right now, can you give an example of uh, you know something that I can use uh, this tool for today? Yeah, absolutely. So. So if you are using uh, Firebase or any any tool, right? It doesn't have to be a free tool. It could be a paid for tool, whatever it might be. Um, you could pair it with smart type in the form of a custom receiver. Um, and so I showed in, in the code the ability to pass in your own custom receiver and essentially listen for these JSON objects as they come out. Um, and so I guess actually step one would be there's because smart type is built on JSON schema, which is an open source standard, um, there are a lot of great open source tools that you can use to generate JSON schema, right? You can use little editors to uh, create trees of attributes and define these things. Um, and then you'd basically just pass that JSON schema into smart type, which would generate your models for you and give you the same uh, type check safety. 
Okay, fantastic. Uh, I think that's all the questions that we have uh, for now. So, uh, Sam, thanks very much for coming on and uh, explaining to us about Smart Type. And everybody, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, please, if you get the chance, do go to demo.empartical.com. Uh, and have an explore of our sandbox so you can get a better idea of uh, what it is we do. Otherwise, uh, thank you for joining us here today, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you.